So we saw that we need to use lists to keep track of information. So what we will do now is try to integrate these lists into the pseudo code that we have been writing for our procedures. So we are dealing with collections of values. So as we saw when we started writing our pseudo code, we use variables to keep track of intermediate values in our computation, to keep track of count, sum, and various other things that we need as we go along. But very often, these intermediate values are not single values, but collections of values. So for instance, if we are looking at students and their marks, there may be more than one student who has the highest mark in physics. So we need to keep a collection of students in that category. Or if we are doing customer behavior, then the set of customers who have bought food items from, say, SV stores is now a collection of names. It's not one single name. Or in our words data set, we might be interested in knowing which nouns come immediately after an adjective. So in all these cases, the variables we are trying to keep track of are not keeping track of a single item, but a list or a sequence of items. So a list is just a sequence of values. And the advantage of using a list is we don't have to worry about how many values will actually be there in that sequence. Whether it's 1 or 10 or 20, there is a single name that refers to this entire sequence. And then, of course, once we have that, we need some notation to manipulate these sequences. So what we will be exploring starting with this lecture is how to extend our pseudocode to give us effective ways of manipulating lists within the kind of syntax that we have been using for our computational procedures. So the first question is, how do you write a list? Well, that's natural enough. We use the square bracket notation to denote the beginning and the end of the list. And we write the elements of the list between these square brackets using commas. So very often, our elements will be of the same type. For instance, we have a list in the first example of integers, 1, 13, and 2. In the second, we have a list with four strings, Vedanayagam, Kane, Monday, and School. Now, it will not always be this way, and we will not be very uh, insistent on this, but most natural situations, a list will have an underlying base type. That is, each element of a list will have a fixed type. An important list, just like for numbers, zero is an important uh, value because we need to initialize it. Similarly, for a list, an important value is the empty list, the list that we start with, which has no elements in it. And this we will just write by a matching pair of brackets, square brackets, uh, which indicate that there is no content, but it is a list. So now, the first thing that we need to do is to be able to manipulate these lists. Right? So when we saw that when we had numbers and things like that, we had expressions, arithmetic operations to add numbers. We had uh, uh, you know, uh, ways of extracting things from numbers. So we need to do the same thing with lists. So the most basic thing you can do with a list is to put two lists together to form a larger list. So this we will call append, and we will write it using this double plus notation. So if we have a list L1, and we have a list L2, and then we want to kind of stick them together, one after the other, right? Then we write that as L1 plus plus L2. So, if, so for example, if L1 is 1 and 13, it has two elements, and L2 has 2, 17, and 1. So remember that in a sequence, the order is important, right? So this is not a set, this is a sequence. And in a sequence, things can be repeated. So we have 1 and 13 in L1, we have another 1 in L2. If we put it together, we get 1, 13, followed by 2, 17, and 1 is a single five element list starting and ending with 1. Right? So this is how we combine lists together. Now this is the general case, but one very specific version of this that we will use is to add an element to a list. So the most basic thing, just like incrementing a number by 1, if you have a counter and you want to say count equal to count plus 1, or if you want to take a sum and you want to say sum equal to sum plus some quantity. Right? The most basic thing you can do with a list is to add one more element at the end of the list. So the way we will do that is use this plus plus. So if you want to add an element x, remember that plus plus requires two lists. It requires a left list and a right list. An element on its own is not a list, but if we put it within square brackets, it becomes a list of size 1. So this is a list of length 1. So we take L plus plus square bracket x, and this basically gives us a new list with one more element in it, namely x at the last position. So plus plus always, remember, adds to the right. So as an example, here is a simple uh, piece of pseudocode which uses this notation. In order to extract the list of students from our uh, school database, right? we want the list of students who are born in May. So what we do is we initialize this list to be empty. So we want a May list. May list is the list of all students born in May. 
So we initially say there are no students born in May. So this is like initializing a counter to zero. And now we use this table format. So we assume that our data is given to us as a table with each row representing one student. So while the table has more rows, we pick up the first row and then we check whether the month in that particular item that we have read corresponds to May or not. So we don't really have a field called month of birth in our data. We have date of birth, but let's assume that we can extract the month with this notation. So we extract the month of birth and we check if it's May. And if it is May, this is what we said before. We want to extend our May list with this new guy. So we have an existing May list and we add to it the sequence number of the current card. So in this way, we are accumulating the sequence numbers or the IDs of all the students who are born in May into this table, or uh, this list, May list. And of course, as we read a row, we move it into another table so we don't have to process it again. And in this way, we keep going until we exhaust the rows. So this way, we read all the rows in the table. And from that, we extract the relevant information, in this case, the sequence number, provided the column with month, date of birth has month May. So you can do a similar thing, for instance, with another field. For instance, if you want to know which all students come from Chennai, then you again process the entire uh, table from beginning to end. And this time we will use a different list. Let us call it Chennai list. So we initialize Chennai list to be empty. And then as we go along, whenever we see a card in which the town or city is Chennai, then we append that sequence number to Chennai list. So exactly the same as the one we did for date of birth in May. So having got a list, what do we do with it? Right? So most often we need to go through the items in the list and process them in some way. So we need to go through it systematically from beginning to end, look at each item and decide what to do with it. So this kind of list iteration requires a primitive. So we are going to create one called for each. So for each is a special kind of primitive which allows us to iterate over a list. So when we say for each x in L, it means that x will initially take the first value in L, then it will take the second value in L, then it will take the third value in L. So with each execution of the loop, x moves forward one position in L. Of course, if L is empty, then this loop will not execute at all. It will terminate exactly like if you had a while loop in which the condition is initially false. So if we have an empty list, this for each loop will just exit. Otherwise, it will go through and it will pick up each element in x. Inside the, inside the list, we will, of course, do something with that x. Right? So in this way, this x, the variable x that we assign in this for each, will iterate through the values in L. So as an example, we have constructed these two lists, right? the list of students' sequence numbers who were born in May and the sequence numbers of the students who come from Chennai. So if we wanted to find out those who qualify in both lists, right? those who are both born in May and are from Chennai, then we will use a familiar nested loop, which is that for every sequence number which appears in the first list, we have to check whether it appears in the second list. So this can be done using this new for each operator just by nesting it. right? So we take every x which is there in the list of students who are born in May. And then for each of those, we pick up all the y's corresponding to the students who are from Chennai. And if we find that the sequence number x matches a sequence number y from the second list, then we will append it to this new list we are building up, which is called May Chennai list. That is, people who are born in May and come from Chennai. And we had, of course, initialized this to empty. So to begin with, we had no students who were both born in May and from Chennai. And systematically, we didn't go back. Notice, we did not go back to the actual table. We already had these lists, May list and Chennai list. And now by just doing a nested iteration using this for each, we are able to extract the common elements. So this is a typical way in which we process lists. So to summarize, a list is a sequence of values which we write within square brackets separated by commas. Right? And we combine lists using plus plus. So x1, x2, a list with two elements plus plus y1, y2, y3, a list with three elements will give us a new list which has five elements in the same sequence left to right. So the second list, second argument of plus plus is added to the right of the first argument and you basically dissolve the boundary and make it a single list. Right? And as we saw, one important use of this plus plus is to attach one new item to a list where we say L plus plus the new item within square brackets. And these square brackets are important because without these square brackets, if I write L plus plus X, 
this is not a well formed expression because the L plus plus X has a list on one side and it has a single item on the other side. So we need two lists for plus plus. So that's why we have to put the square bracket. And in order to process list, we saw this for each operation. So for each iterates through the values in list. Right? And this allows us to process lists systematically from beginning to end and do something with each element as we go along.